Greetings from Terrier D Lab. Question for you Do you own a highly collectible blackface Fender Princeton? Well, here is a good example of what you don't want to do to it. All right, so let's give the Princeton a little look over before we go underside and I show you what the problem is. First off, I noticed that the output transformer is not original. I don't know who makes this one. It looks generic, just has an 8 ohm output. Filter cap has been replaced at one point in time, and they used one of these little diamond mounting type plates. I don't know why, maybe the original hole was enlarged and they couldn't put the original type cap back in. Here is the power transformer, which appears to be original, it has that 606 number, but if you look, there's some artwork here on the chassis, and there's some additional holes that I'll show you that have been drilled which indicate that somebody was thinking about putting a different power transformer in this thing, but they never got around to it. So let's go bottom side. Well, here's where it gets good. As you can see, we have quite the assortment of different capacitors and resistors that have been changed. Somebody had the right idea, you know, upgrade it, but it's like they said, hey, I got some blue ones, I got some orange ones, I got some brown ones, let's just put it all in. But here's the part I don't really like at all. Take a look at the main filter cap here. And you see these two caps, these 22 microfarad guys just kind of hanging out. They are actually tied in to what appears to be a defective section on the original filter cap. And then they have some resistors here that they're feeding other parts of the circuitry with. So there was obviously some of these other things will require some cleanup in the future, but the reason the amp was brought to me is the owner discovered these beautiful filter caps that have been installed and he saw the additional resistors and some crazy wiring and over here some other resistors and he said this doesn't look right. So he wants this to be replaced and put back to original. So this is one thing that I'd highly recommend that you never do. And that is if you have a filter cap in your amp that is leaking and causing problems, you do not parallel new components on the defective section of the cap. Because what that does is if this cap was leaking and causing issues, the leakage path is still there from that terminal to ground. So if you add other caps to try to reduce hum or whatever you're trying to do, you need to isolate the new circuitry and abandon that old filter cap, okay? So what we're gonna do is remove all this and I'm gonna install a stock filter cap and rewire this the way it was originally. Then we're gonna go over here, this negative bias area, you'll see that there's some more resistors here that have been added as they were trying to set the bias. We're gonna correct that, but what the owner wants is instead of the resistors that set up the negative bias to the finals, we're gonna add a pot, just like in the Fender Deluxe circuit, so he can dial in the bias and be able to control that. All right, so back to what I was showing you top side, I showed you that artwork, and somebody had it drilled an additional hole, indicating that they were gonna put in a different power transformer. But here is another hole here and there's another one over here. So I don't know whatever became of that project, but I'm glad that they didn't carve up the chassis and put some aftermarket thing in here and completely destroy the value of the amp. It's bad enough there's additional holes, but it's still somewhat original. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is remove this additional capacitor array and I'm going to remove this old original cap, clean the gigantic globs of solder off the chassis, make it presentable, get a new filter cap installed, and I just happen to have one right here, made by CE Distribution. I install these in all the Princetons. It's a great cap, it's about 40 bucks. So there's the old cap, it's out of the way. Now, we got this mess to contend with. Those globs of solder are the result of not using the proper heat when you try to solder in the component. So, what's the best way to get it off that chassis? You guessed it. 
good old Snozoramus. Good evening. Sit back, relax, light up an old ghoul. And of course, some solder wreck. A lot of people wonder where ghouls come from. Uh, they It'll clean it right up and leave a nice yeah. tinned area for your new cat. <laughs> New caps installed. Time to get old Snozoramus back in the game. Getting there, the old solder. Thousand degrees of heat. She'll solder in like a dream. And remember, guys, there's no reason to do a gigantic glob. All right, just flow your solder around the terminal. Make it look good when you're done. Take some alcohol, clean it up, get that rosin off there so it doesn't look nasty. Little Snozoramus to the rescue. New filter caps installed. I'm getting ready to put in the new variable bias system like the Deluxe has. So I've epoxied this 10K pot to the chassis. Now I'm going to take off these resistors here and rewire this accordingly. I've got the negative bias circuit complete. I used a 10K pot with a 20K resistor to ground. The wiper arm goes over to the Sprague negative bias cap. I'm monitoring it right now on my meter. You see the negative 31. Got a little screwdriver just here on the pot so we can swing that voltage around. Okay. I think the target voltage on the schematic is like negative 34, 35, something like that. But what I'm going to do is install some current shunts and pin 8 of each of the 6v6s and we can measure that current directly. So I have the current shunts installed and I'm measuring on pin 8 through the 1 ohm resistor now and I can see the current through the tube which is about 29 milliamps. Okay. So I can take my little tweakity doo dah and I can adjust the bias through that tube now. So there's 30, 28, 27, 26, whatever you want, right? So you can kind of dial it in, which is much nicer than just relying on those fixed resistive values. Well, there we go. Happy Princeton. New filter cap, new bias circuit, ready to rock. Now just remember, if you've spent the money on one of these collectible black face Princetons like this one, don't hack it up or don't take it to somebody that might hack it up and for sure be very cautious. If you're buying on eBay, ask for a lot of details, ask for pictures of those chassis so you don't get hacked. See ya.